Uh, and our guest is uh, Dr. Glenn Tonzer, K-State Ag Economist and uh, really a livestock specialist as he uh, travels all over the, uh, the state as well as the country. Well, at least we'll get back to traveling, uh, uh, doing a lot of presentations, but we're talking about the cattle market and, and uh, really the, the box beef prices and where they are in correlation to cash cattle. And, and so Dr. Tonzer, as we, as we look, we have a lot of conversations with producers uh, going, uh, you know, we still don't see why even at uh, 225, 230 uh, for, for these boxed beef prices, they seem to be, you know, a little higher because we don't see the demand. But are there some numbers we're not seeing because it seems like restaurants, food service, schools, others haven't uh, been using uh, the amount that we did say pre-pandemic? There's certainly several things we quote unquote don't see. And what I mean by that is like analysts, we don't have all the numbers in front of us or we have some indirect indicators. One of them first and foremost is, is the cost of running a packing and processing facility. So we're left sort of guessing what those cost structures are. I know with certainty today, those costs are higher because of COVID, but exactly how much higher that's open for debate and probably varies by plant and plant size and so forth. You asked me about the demand side, like where the beef is going and what the you know, beef demand situation is. I've been pleasantly surprised. You know, I've done lots of these sessions in the last year. Um, the retail side beef demand has been amazing to me. Uh, consumers' willingness to buy, and ground beef's been a lot of that because the public's comfortable and used to using ground beef. But I also interject in this is I remain concerned on the restaurant side. So yes, certain states are opening up. You know, Texas is quote unquote open for business and those kind of things probably will be good for food service demand. But exactly how fast states open up and more importantly, how comfortable public in those states are going back to dine-in eating. And with that, higher demand for sit-down meals, things like ribeye steaks, is a big uncertainty here in 2021. I think there's a lot of reasons for optimism. We have a lot of cash. Household savings is way up. Uh, household incomes actually went up in aggregate despite the once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. That's because we borrowed from you know the future. The government large stimulus is a big part of that. I suspect that will boost beef demand in aggregate, but the public's got to be comfortable going out and about, and that's going to vary a lot by age cohorts and their health situation and so forth. So we're going to be navigating that throughout 2021. The other one I have to throw in real quick, Ken, is the international trade front. So, you know, the beef industry is way more dependent, and I would argue that's a good thing to boost cattle prices on international exports than it used to be. But it's not just a U.S. are we rolling out the vaccine or people getting comfortable going back to normal economic activity. That's really a global discussion. So the Asian markets and Canadian markets, the Mexican markets, all major markets for U.S. beef, exactly how comfortable they are going back to normal foot traffic and being another pull on U.S. beef demand is really important for us to monitor. Before we let you go, we're just going to do a little crystal ball uh, quickly. Um, you know, where will we be this summer? Will, will we you know, if this demand continues, will we see higher um, higher feedlot prices or are there still too many unknown factors? Uh, I anticipate we will. So I'm bullish net the demand story, which is supportive of pulling up cattle prices. I'm also bullish that we know how to run facilities, even if COVID lingers with us a little bit longer. That's not to say we won't have challenges, but we've learned a lot. So the bottleneck type disruptions, I'm optimistic, won't be nearly the same going forward. And with that, we have um, some supply side supportive prices that's coming. So we're going to have fewer cattle going through the system going forward. If you add all that up where I'm looking at today, uh, once a month, I actually put out projected returns on ag manager uh, for the feedlot sector. We're looking at positive net margins being projected. Uh, my last numbers came out about a week ago through September. So cattle coming out of feed yards through September will have a net positive margin. Obviously, everybody wants a larger net positive, right. but the mere fact those are positive margins that are being projected is consistent with that answer I just gave you. All right, uh, Dr. Tondra, as always, uh, thanks for the update. Uh, good to talk to you, and we'll uh, talk to you again. Thanks for having me on, Ken. Dr. Glenn Tondra, K-State Ag Economist, has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more in just a moment. <music> 